What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add images to our text widget with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at adding images to text widgets. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at adding images to our text widget. We'll also look at uh, highlighting text like this with different colors, and we'll maybe add a, a scroll bar to this thing if we have time. So I've mentioned with the text widget, we've been looking at this in the last couple of videos, there's just a ton of stuff you can do with this thing. And one of the things you can do is add images inside of here. So it's actually really easy to do this and uh, we should be able to knock this out fast. And also I wanna show you how to sort of highlight stuff. You know, we're gonna eventually build a text editor and you, you wanna highlight things and maybe make them bold or do different things to them or just you know make them different colors like this. So how can we do this? We'll look at that also in this video. So, so let's head over to our code and this is the code that I had yesterday. It is text underscore write dot pi. Check the link in the comment section below for the playlist if you haven't seen that video. We're using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. So uh, I made our app a little bit bigger because we're gonna add a couple more buttons. So it's 600 now. So the first thing we wanna do is that text highlighting stuff because that is super easy. We can knock that right out. So let's head over to our text widget. So it's my underscore text. And inside of here, we can just add a couple more attributes. So to change the highlight of a, of a text, like when you drag your mouse over it, that is the select background. You're selecting text and you're selecting the background color. So we can just go select background equals and then just pick your color. So I wanna make this yellow. Now, actually let's just save this and run it. So text underscore write.py bring this over if we open our text file that we had in the last video and do this, you can see it's highlighted. Now, when we do this, the text underneath it turns white by default. And that's not great. It's really hard to read in my eyes at least. So we need to change that as well. So let's close this and head back over to our code. And to change that, just like before it was the select background, text is almost always foreground color. So we just change the select foreground. And we can set that equal to, let's say black. So let's go ahead and save this and run it and make sure that worked. So open our text file, highlight this and boom, now it changes black. So super easy, really, really nothing to that. So, okay, now we wanna look at adding images. So we've added images to all types of things throughout this playlist of 100 plus videos. And, you know, we're just gonna do almost the same that we've always done with images. And that's first to define the image, and then after that, put the image that we've defined into the thing. So let's uh, add an image. So add image, and let's call this my underscore image, call it anything you want. And this is gonna be a photo image, as we've always done before. And now we just set the file equal to whatever we want. And if you've been watching these videos for a while, you know I have a directory in my GUI directory where we're saving this file called images. And inside of here, I have uh, an image just called profile.png. And if we come over to our terminal and ls, we can see we've got this images directory right here. And inside of there, I just keep images from time to time. So I just slapped a file in there called profile.png. So we've defined it now. And now we need to add it to the thing. So let's create a button to do this so that it doesn't just show up because uh, we're gonna need to play with this a little bit in the future. So let's go, uh, let's create a button called image underscore button. And that's gonna be a button. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal add image. And we want the command to be, oh, let's say add underscore image. We'll create this function in just a second here. And so let's go image underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like five, just to push it down a little bit from the other button. Okay, so now let's create this function. So let's go define, add image. And inside of here, let's define this thing. So I'm gonna tab this over so it's inside this function. Now, whenever we're dealing with functions with Kinter and images, we've talked about this in the past, the garbage function of Kinter gets confused with the images. So we have to always make these global. So let's go global, my underscore image. 
It's just something you have to do in Kinter. There's not really any way around that. So now we've defined this thing. Now let's put it into our text widget. So how do we do that? Well, we just go my underscore text, which is the name of our text widget. And then we use the image underscore create function. And then we need to tell this thing where we want to put it. So for now, let's just put it at the end of our text box. And then what do we want to do? We want to put image equals my underscore image. So let's go ahead and save this and run this guy. So now when we click this button, boom, the image appears at the end of our text box, which is just right here. We could delete it just using the delete key. Now if we open our text file, and we've got this whole thing. And then we add the image, it's at the end down here, right? Because we designated the end to be the place where we want to put this. But what if we want to put it somewhere else? How do we do that? Well, let's head back over here. Right here is where we designate where we want the thing, right? So let's create a variable called position. And now we can get the, the current cursor position in our text widget, right? So we could do that by calling the text widget. So my underscore text and then dot index. And then we want to get the insert index position. The insert index position is basically wherever the cursor is sitting inside the text box at the time. Uh, you know, Kinter feels like wherever that cursor is, that's where you want to insert something. So it calls it insert. So we can designate this position as whatever the current cursor position is of the text box. So now we can, we can use this position instead of end. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here and run it again. So let's open our text file. And let's say we want it right here, we can put our cursor there, you can see it's blinking right there, If we add the image, boom, it pops it in right there. And if you're curious about what position this is, these are numbers. So it goes by line and sort of uh, column. So that's why the text widget uses 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. The one is the line, the point is the position. So point O is right here, point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, as I move the cursor over, point six, point seven, point eight, point nine, et cetera. And we could actually see that if we want by, by really quickly, let's just create a, a label down here and let's go my underscore label. And that's gonna be a label. We wanna put it in a root. And we, and we want the text to equal nothing. And let's go my underscore label dot pack. And then we can come up here, let's copy this. And now we can come up here and we could just go my label dot config and then set the text equal to position. So if we save this and run it, and let's say open our text file, and we say right here, what is the position of right there? We could add our image and we can see the position is 3.18. And we can confirm that by starting here and going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's 0. 0.18, right? So that's how the positioning system works for this guy. So very cool. How are we doing on time? We got 10 minutes into this. Let's very quickly add a scroll bar because we can see we already want to scroll and I'm using my mouse scroll wheel or you can use the arrow keys, but that's not great. Sometimes you just want a uh, scroll bar here. So we've done this many, many times in the past in this course. So let's just come up here and do this again. Let's go, let's see, let's create a frame. Let's go my underscore frame and that's going to be a frame and it's going to be in root. And then let's go my underscore frame frame dot pack, let's give this a pad Y of like, I don't know, just 10 or so. And then we can get we can take the pad Y off of our text box. And now let's put our text box in my frame. So we could do that. Okay, so now we've got a frame, we can add a, a scroll bar to the frame and sort of connect it to our text widget, sort of like we've done in the past with other things. So let's go, let's go create scroll bar. And let's call this, uh, I don't know, text underscore scroll. And that's going to be a scroll bar. And we want to put it in my frame. All right. So then we can go text underscore scroll dot pack. And we want to put this on the side equals uh, right, we want it on the right side. And let's go fill equals y. So it fills all the way to the, the whole length of the frame. Okay, so then inside of our text box widget, we need to set up the uh, y scroll command. 
and set that equal to text underscore scroll dot set. So we need to set that to that. All right. And then just down here somewhere, we can uh, configure our scroll bar by going text underscore scroll dot config and then setting the command equal to my underscore text dot y view. You know, this is just scroll bar stuff. If you don't know what I'm doing here, go back and watch the videos we have on scroll bars and uh, sort of refresh yourself. Link in the comment section below. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. And I think that should do it. Did that pretty fast. So <laughs> I might've made an error. So let's open a text file. Boom. And now we've got the scroll bar. And that looks good. We do this, we can add the image. Okay. So we are coming right along with this text widget, learning all kinds of cool basic stuff. I think maybe in the next video, we'll start to actually create a full, fl uh, full fledged text editor. Maybe that might be fun. That'll give us a few videos of a, a little project we can work on, or I may talk about some other basic text widget things that we might want to learn, but I think we got a pretty good grasp on it right now that we can kind of move forward a little bit. Uh, so that's fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, save pages $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.